Hello students, welcome to this channel. Today I am going to start chapter 1 of Microeconomics class 11 which is Economics and Economy. In this lecture, we will learn about what is economics? What are the two branches of economics? Differentiate between microeconomics and macroeconomics. And at last, we will discuss the nature of economy. So students, stay tuned, watch the video till the end. And if you have any doubt, please rewind the video and try to understand again the topic. Now let's start with the top. The first and foremost question that comes to our mind is what is economics? Yeah, what do you mean by economics? So the answer to this question is economic studies, the way we work together to transform the scarce resources into valuable and usable goods and services so as to satisfy the human wants. Or in other words, we can say that economics is a science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses. Students, please focus the two underlying words here, human behavior and scarce means. Human behavior here means human are supposed to be rational thinker when he study economics. So what do you mean by rational thinker? Rational thinker means the person who are able to use logical thoughts rather than emotional while making decisions. Secondly, the word scarce means alternative have alternative uses that act as a problem of making choice. And if you have to choose from alternative uses, then what happened? It creates an economic problem or problem of choice. And for this, every economy or an individual has to find out the solutions. So, this implies that economy is a very vast concept. And therefore, it is divided into two main branches. They are microeconomics and macroeconomics. So first, we start with the microeconomics. Microeconomics is that branch of economics which studies the economic variables at individual units. So what are the individual units here? Individual units are here consumer, household, firm, industry, price of the product, etc. Here, there are two examples I have shown you. Per capita income and demand of a commodity. These are the examples of microeconomics. Okay. So, microeconomics also examine how scarce resources are to be allocated among people efficiently. So, it covers product pricing, consumer behavior, factor pricing, firms behavior, industry location. Got it? Now, move forward to the second concept that is macroeconomics. So, what do you mean by macroeconomics here? Macroeconomics is that branch of economics which deals with economy as a whole instead of individual aspects. Here, we study the economic variables at aggregate level such as national income, aggregate output. What do you mean by national income? National income means income of a country as a whole. And aggregate output means total output of an economy. So, here we are going to study the economic variables at a larger unit. So, that is in total consumption, total investment, total saving. So, also it analyzes the environment where firms, households, consumer and government take decisions and hence macroeconomic covers national income, general price level, employment.
employment level, level of saving and investment, balance of trade and balance of payment. Also student, I want to share that the macro counterpart of per capita income is national income and the macro counterpart of demand of a community is aggregate output. One interesting thing I want to tell you that in the economics earlier history, economics is always dealt with microeconomics. But after 1930s, Great Depression of America, macroeconomics came into existence. Now, let me take a second subtopic that is difference between microeconomics and macroeconomics. So here are some major differences between both of them. The first difference is mean. Microeconomics deals with individual units and the effect of individual decisions regarding the allocation of scarce resources. That means microeconomics always deals with individual unit and you know very well what are the individual units. They are such as consumer, households, firm, industry, etc. On the other hand, macroeconomic deals with aggregate or large scale units that is structure, behavior and decision making in an economy as a whole. Here it deals with economic variables at aggregate or large scale level such as total consumption, total investment and so on. Now come to the second point derived from microeconomics is originated from the Greek term micro which means small whereas macroeconomics is derived from the term, Greek literature term macro which means large. Third point when it comes to business application microeconomics applies to operational or internal issues. Conversely macroeconomics applies to environment or external issues. Now let me talk about the fourth point. Microeconomic is concerned with single economic variables such as consumer, demand, price etc. On the other hand macroeconomic is the study of aggregate and here the subject matters are aggregate output, national income and so on. Now we talk about the scope of economics, scope of microeconomics and macroeconomics. Microeconomic scope is narrow whereas macroeconomic scope is wide and if we talk that the scope of macroeconomics is wider than microeconomics because microeconomics studies various economics problem at individual level such as how the price of a particular commodity will affect its quantity demand and quantity supply. As against macroeconomics deals with the problem of entire economy such as unemployment, monetary and physical policy, international trade and so on. Next point is central problem. Microeconomy helps in coping with the central economic problems such as price determination, and allocation of resources as against macroeconomics helps in determining the level of income and employment. Last point, when we talk about the importance, microeconomics ascertains price of a product and other factor of production. Conversely, macroeconomics helps in maintaining the stability in the general price level and try to solve the major economic problems such as poverty, unemployment, inflation and deflation and so forth. First, I am going to discuss a very interesting subtopic, nature of economy. Is economy a science? Is economy an art? Or economy is a science and art both? A lot of questions comes from this part and if you understand it finally, there is no scope of you answering them incorrect in exam. 
So students, please listen and try to understand it carefully. So let's start with a big question. Is economy a science? Well, how would we know that it is a science? Because we are common students, how would we know what science is? So, to justify this, I will share five parameters with you. If any subject satisfies or fulfills the, these five parameters, then its subject can be called as science. So starting with the first parameter, systematic body of knowledge. Well, economic itself is a systematic body of knowledge. Because if economics was not a systematic body of knowledge, it could not be taught or learned. So that's why economics is a systematic body of knowledge and that is our curriculum too. The second point, cause and effect relationship. So to understand this, let us remember the law of demand. What law of demand states or tells us? Law of demand states that there is an inverse relationship between price and its quantity demand. That means if the price of a commodity X goes up, then the demand of a commodity goes down. So what is the cause and what is the effect here? Here, the cause is the price of a commodity goes up and the effect is its demand goes down. So economics does studies the cause and effect relationship. Now, the third parameter is capable of measurement. Can we measure economics? Yes, of course, we can measure economics in terms of money or in format of money. Fourth point, its own methodological apparatus. That means, does economy has its own method? Again, yes, economy itself has two important methods that is inductive method or deductive method. And explanation of this, I will tell you later. Now, the last parameter is its ability to forecast. Does economy has the ability to forecast? Yes, with the help of economy, we forecast like what would be the unemployment rate next year or what would be the GDP next year. So, we forecast lots of things by using economics. So, hence, economic fulfills all the five parameters. So, economic can be called as science. Now, let's see economics is an art or not. So, before I proceed, I want to discuss a renowned economist definition that is J.M. Keyes definition and art is a system of rules for the attainment of a given end. Here, the underlined word end means the result or the target. That means, according to Keynes, a system of rules for the attainment of a given target is called an art. Okay, so basically, the art means nothing but the practice of knowledge and science teaches us how to do whereas arts teaches us to do. Let me explain this with an example. Suppose when I say I know a recipe or I can cook something then this is a science because I have a knowledge to cook the recipe but when I throw myself into the kitchen and do the cutting and chopping to make something which can be eaten by humans, this is called an art. So, ultimately, science is theory as well as art is practical. And now, we relate this with economics. We not only study economics, but also examine its like unemployment in India is X percentage, but we also find out how do we drop it to Y percentage, right? So, economics is not just study of facts, we also try to get some judgments, some values out of it. And this getting some judgment or getting the values out of it is called an art. 
So hence, economics is both science as well as an art. Okay, out of this, uh, I want to share one renowned person definition that science requires art, art requires science and each being complementary to each other. So by this again, it is more clear that economics is science as well as an art. But science has two bifurcation within itself. One is positive science, other is normative science. Oh, so now we talk what is positive science and what is normative science. Positive science always states a fact whereas normative science passing the judgment. Positive science states what it is and normative science states what ought to be or what should be. So let us let this understand better by example. Suppose a one statement Ram is eating pasta. So this is a positive science because here Ram is doing and consider that Ram is a fatty guy. Then I give you one another statement Ram you should eat salad. So this statement is a normative science. So positive science always states a fact whereas normative science passing the judgments. Third point positive science is descriptive in nature. How it will be descriptive in nature? Suppose you were sick, you went to the doctor and doctor conducted a few tests and found out that you had a malaria and conveying this message to you. Then this is positive science and descriptive in nature. Whereas when the doctor prescribes you in the prescription that you need to take these medicines few days, next few days, then this will be prescriptive nature and this is normative science. Last point that positive science studies a cause and effect relationship whereas normative science studies value judgment. How it could be? Positive science studies the cause and effect relationship. That means if we say a statement because of this, this will happen. Because of that, this will happen. If you heat the water, the temperature of the water goes up. Then this will be a positive statement, a positive science because it shows a cause and effect relationship. But if I say that don't put your hand into the water when water is hot, then this is a normative, senses, uh, normative science because here we are giving the value judgment. So Positive science gives you cause and effect relationship, whereas normative science gives you value judgment. I hope by this, you can easily find out the difference between both positive and normative science. Well guys, this brings me to the end of this lesson. I hope you find the lesson very useful. Thank you.